down in Epsique in New Jersey, um, they have this Miracle League. And so there's basically where people with a special need, whatever, once again, whatever your need is, um, you can play like a two inning baseball game and you know, you hear your name, you get to go hit, you know, go up to the plate, you hit the ball, you, you get a base hit, people are cheering for you. And we're like, this is phenomenal. Now, so Gavin's involved in this, but it's an hour and 15 minutes away. Mm-hmm. So I'm sitting there thinking, how in the world, the mecca of baseball, you know, Tom's River, how in the world is there not a special needs baseball field? Now, not to say that there isn't challenger leagues, like, you know, Trell, you know, Tom's River uh, Baseball runs one. And the only problem is they run, the, they run it on dirt. And Gavin's in a wheelchair. It rains, you know, you know, on a Thursday. By the time they do it on Sunday, he, you know, he's still trudging around in the dirt. That's that's not the idea. The idea was to be able for him to be able to move around just like everyone else as best to his ability. So the idea was really, all right, we're going to build a baseball field and like a snack shack, and we'll run leagues, and that was it. <laughs> Two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. That was it. And I was thinking to myself, all right, listen. I know enough people that maybe if I told my story that we can do this. So then when Mary came on that day in March and she says, listen, I know you want this baseball field and stuff, but that ain't it. She says, this. I said, what do you mean that's <laughs> Mary's and got bigger vision. Not and, enough. And what enough. happened was you, she says, listen, no, we need a playground where if you're in a wheelchair, you can stay in a wheelchair, not be stared at be able to go down a slide or go down a zip line or like her, her, the wheels for being, you know, once again, she was, you know, uh, you know, an elementary teacher as well. The wheels were already in motion. She already knew that this wasn't fair. And that was really what it came down to that. This just isn't right. This, this is an injustice that why, because you got into a car accident or you had a birth defect or, you know, you got some type of cancer. Why all of a sudden, oh, well, you, you sit in the corner, you sit there because you're out of the game now. And that just isn't fair. So she said, we needed this. So uh, we reached out to um, our friend, Mike Rotaco, uh, who I've known since he was a kid. And uh, I needed, I, listen, I, I've been living in Towns River for like the last 25 years. And I know people, but I don't really like know people. And I knew that I needed to go to somebody who um, was, you know, well known within the community. And he said, listen, you need to start a nonprofit and boom, 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 boom. And I said, all right, um, so what, how does that, you know, how do you work from there? And he says, well, you got to do this, you know, you got to get the, you know, you need a lawyer, you need an accountant, you know, you, know, you need a, a board of trustees. And I said, what the heck's a board of trustees? <laughs> right. So he said, I'm trying to build I said, playgrounds. I said, yeah, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I just want a baseball and that's what field. I was telling him. I said, I don't need this. I just need, you know, I, I just need to raise money. He says, yeah, but if you don't have people behind you that people can trust, your story will only go so far because, you know, people are going to need to know that here you are, you're, you're telling this story and you're telling them about building this thing and it's all in your head. Like you have nothing except a, a, a great way of telling this story and it's, it's personable and it's, you know, it could happen to you and you, you bring that home. And he says, you have a way where when you're done talking, people are going to say, okay, where do I write the check out to or how can I help? It was never, well, I don't, I'm not really sure. So he helped me form, you know, this board. And, you know, obviously Justin joined in. Uh, you got a Jeremy Grunin, a Noel Carino, and you start a Michael York. All of a sudden, he started collecting this group of Tom's River people who are going to want to be in Tom's River for a very long time. And then when I started to then ask for money, the major question was after my story was, well, do you have a board of trustees? And it was like, I do. And I showed them the list and they're like, Sure, I'll 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 donate. I'll invest. Good I'll be a of part advice. of you. Perfect. So he so, gave you the right roadmap. So he, you know, Mike, Mike really kind of, you know, at least with the board and with the foundation, kind of had the path. Now, really, the the issue was, you know, controlling my wife because it was more and more stuff. So now it turned now from now just a baseball field and a snack shack to now this this all inclusive playground. But then what? It, but then other kids wanted to do other things. Like, well, I don't want to play baseball. I'd rather play, you know, bocce ball. I'd rather play basketball or, a mini- you know, I'd rather play miniature golf. So it's just like, whole. Oh. so now hmm. here come the courts, which has bocce ball and basketball. Here comes a six-hole miniature golf course. Then as I was starting to do these fundraising talks, all of a sudden I'm looking out to the audience and I'm not talking to eight-year-olds and 12-year-olds. I'm talking to 40, 50, 60, 70, 80-year-olds. 
and whatever the reason, they're in a wheelchair and what they need. So all of a sudden, mm-hmm. it went from now just a playground slash baseball field to now an all-inclusive complex for anyone of any age. So therefore, you need a, you need a, a walking path so people can now, after knee replacement or hip replacement, they have a place to go to do rehabilitation, not in their home, right. but outside. You built a playground so that a grandma who used to take care of her three grandchildren but then suffered a stroke, well, now she's not grandma anymore because she doesn't have half the use of her body, but now she can now go on a merry-go-round or down a zip line and be the grandmother that she used to be and but still be in her wheelchair, but still be the grandmother that can participate and do things. So that then all of a sudden you had, you had a Thrive station you know, for help people with rehabilitation. So now this thing is now just off the hook, and now all of a sudden you're looking at not $250,000 anymore, but now you're looking at $2.2 million. And you're like, well, I, I'm not sure if I know how to do that. <laughs> and um, you know, it wasn't really, you know, it wasn't going to a book, and it wasn't going to like a manual, because there is no manual, just like being a special needs parent. There is no manual. You do what you think is best, and you hope the decisions you make are the ones that, that are correct. And it's not like we had you know everything work out fine, um, but the game plan was, how am I going to raise all this money, but then also be able to, after it's built, how do I get this to be now a living, breathing entity? And that was the most important part that when I was going to investors, it's not, hey, listen, I'm not slapping this thing on the ground and then walking, walking away, away and saying, I said, no, this thing is going to live and breathe. This is going to be able to have people who are typical to do 50 to 100 hours of community service. This is going to be where caretakers can drop off their loved ones. And now, instead of and instead of, sitting, instead of sitting in a waiting room, no, no, you're going to sit next to another special needs parent. You'll be able to network with doctors and therapists, but also be able to see your loved one either do something that they never did before or something that they used to do. And then that's how all of a sudden this thing really took off in regards to donors is because you went from now just, you know, kids, you went to everyone because eventually everyone's going to need something where they're going to have to do some kind of rehabilitation or or they're going to have a a loss of some part of their uh, bodily ability. And um, so things then really started to, to, to roll and, you know, the community and, you know, it's a one man show. Like I have a board and they're great, but they have lives. Justin's on the board and he's got a million things. And I feel bad asking him to say, hey, Justin, can you do this? Can you? I'll do it myself. Justin, you're doing other stuff. <laughs> well, come on, man. On occasion. But that, that's, but that, yeah. that, it was, a, it was, you know, for the, for the most part, for a while, a, a one man show. And, you know, it's, it's and you have a job and you have a life and you have a family. I yeah. mean, it's not like this is, no. you know, I mean, so I, we're all part of different nonprofits and right. in and around the community and the people that typically start those things. That's, that is their job, right? So it's no easy feat. It's not like you, you do this in the off hours and you can build this multimillion dollar nonprofit on the side, right? right. It's two full-time jobs. It's two and full-time, full-time jobs. being a dad and being a husband and caretaker. And dad, right. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you probably get a lot of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> enough, um, enough. But the drive is there because you want you want to see it built because you know how 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 it's going to help so many people. You know, not only in Tom's River but in Monmouth Ocean and Burlington County. There, there's nothing quite like this in the country, and that's what makes it so different. Sure, I'm not going to say there aren't special needs playgrounds or special needs areas. Like I'm not denying that there are but not like something like this where it's for anyone of any age to be able to offer all these leagues and all these different, you know, special events, you know, like a perfect example of like, how can Gavin go pumpkin picking? Seriously, he's in a wheelchair. How, how can I take him there? It's something that we used to do with all our kids. Well, it's real simple. 